Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Mindful Monday. And so if it's your first time joining us, you're welcome to put in the comments where you're coming from. If you have any questions, comments, you can also DM me them. And if you have any topics you'd like to hear covered in future sessions, we'd love to hear about it. Again, you can put it in comments or DM them directly to me. If you type mindful into comments, you'll receive a link that will invite you to follow it to receive a free audio, a hypnotic audio I've created for releasing limiting beliefs as well. And so today we are here to talk about how to quickly rewire your brain to easily make lasting changes. And so, you know, we often hear that it takes 21, 28, sometimes 60 days or more, I don't know, um, to create a habit. And while there is research to, to back this up, um, we also know that it's, Oftentimes, after these three or four weeks that we have created this, this positive habit that we're trying to create or, or you know, goal or whatever it is, um, it can still be easily derailed um, because life happens, we get busy, we get sidetracked, and then things happen and we're like, oh, I didn't do any of this, so I'm just not going to continue. And so what we really want to do, as we talked about just a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about uh, micro habits to um, change your life, is to start very, very small. Okay, very, very small. And then to use a prompt, or as we call an NLP, a trigger that is already existing in your life uh, to remind you to do this behavior or this habit. And so in the book, Tiny Habits by Dr. Um, BJ Fogg, uh, which I just love this book, um, he decided to do two push-ups every time he used the, the restroom, okay? And so I thought, wow, that's like the greatest idea ever. So I decided to follow up on this and I decided to do one yoga sun salutation every time I used the bathroom at home, of course, not in public. Um, but it was, I had such amazing results. So I was like, this is like, I always kind of experiment on myself before I experiment with you guys, just to let you know. And so I found this to be like so life changing and transforming. I saw like a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more uh, stamina, et cetera, et cetera. And so this really works because even when we're busy or when we're not feeling really well, when things, when life happens, if you will, um, you know, as, as Dr. Fogg would say, our motivation dips down and then thereby our, our goal gets a little bit farther away from us. So we can still usually do those two push-ups or that one yoga sun salutation, even if we're not feeling great, even if we're busy, et cetera, et cetera. And so that makes us feel better, right? It doesn't feel like we failed. And so if on the other hand, um, I was aiming to do is one of my, my uh, positive aims has always been is to do my 45 minute Pilates workout every morning, every single morning, mind you. Um, well, sometimes things do get in the way of that. You know, there's a client who needs to see me um, earlier than expected. There's a phone call that has to be had. Um, maybe I'm just feeling a little sore from yesterday's workout or I'm overtired because I, I had a workshop on the weekend. So sometimes things get in the way of that and then I can start to feel bad or guilty or discouraged. And, you know, two or three days of that, you might be like, Ugh, well, you know, I'm just a failure or like this is not going to happen again. And you kind of go that all or none. At least that's my my personal experience. So you kind of give up on it. And that, um, you know, that negative feeling, that kind of feeling down on yourself leads to not so good of a result of what you're really trying to um, accomplish in life. Now, if you changed your target behavior, for me personally, if I change it from simply getting onto my Pilates reformer every day instead of doing 45 minutes, um, right after, shall we say, right after I go for my morning walk, which is something I already do, so that could be an existing prompt or a trigger, then I've anchored into um, just getting onto that Pilates reformer as being a success, okay? And so, what happens when you do that, and so it's pretty easy to just get onto the Pilates reformer, maybe not to do the 45 minutes, um, but I can do that if I'm tired or if, you know, there's a lot going on, I can just get onto it. And so once I'm onto it though, just like if you just get onto your yoga mat or if you just put your sneakers on to go for that run um, without the expectation of going for the run, is what happens is you're likely to do one or two more steps. So, uh, you know, I might not do 45 minutes of a full Pilates workout if I'm busy or, or not feeling good, but I've already made the effort of getting on it, which is a small effort, you know, but it's an effort. So I'm like, well, I'm here, so why don't I do five or 10 minutes and see how that goes? And so that's, that's you know, that's going above and beyond if your goal is just to get on it, but that is 
you know, creating the habit and it's creating a successful tiny habit. And that's kind of what the whole point of all of this is. And so now what Dr. Fogg also wants us to know is that there's a way to hack into our own neurobiology, into our own brain chemistry, if you will, and get into habits and behaviors faster and easier than that 21 to 28 days of using like time and repetition, etc. Now, all of the above stuff that we talked about, of course, like the tiny habits, the prompts, the existing prompts or triggers, if you will, that's going to be important, but equally of importance is something that a lot of folks have not talked about. In fact, he, he's, his research shows that nobody talked about it before he did. And I, I do believe that because he's a very respectful person is that celebrating these tiny little accomplishments each and every time you do them is going to create the emotion and, and create the emotion that's going to cause the change. Okay. And so if you were to celebrate every time you did those two push-ups, or every time you did that one yoga sun salutation or every time you just got onto the Pilates machine, then that would be amazing. But we tend to feel like we have to do the full Pilates workout. We have to run the full marathon. We have to lose the whole 10 pounds. We have to go to the gym for 30 consecutive days before we celebrate because we feel like, well, anybody can do all this stuff. But the fact of the matter is, is that that's actually counterproductive to us. I mean, yes, anybody can, but how many people do, right? And how many times have you, if that's your, your goal, obviously you're not there, I'm not trying to insult anyone. So the point of the matter is, is we need to celebrate ourselves every time we accomplish a little tiny goal, just like a parent celebrates a really small child or a baby when they're, when they're starting to grow or to learn, or to take their first steps or to make their first words. So we wanna encourage ourselves and have that whole, I mean, Kristen Neff talks about self-compassion, but it's more than that, it's celebrating. It's like, yes, you did it kind of thing. It's like a cheerleader kind of concept. And so when we do that, what happens is, you know, every time we say yes, or, you know, we celebrate, we release these chemicals, these neurotransmitters in our brain, they're uh, dopamine and other ones. And it makes us want to do the behavior that we just celebrated even more, kind of like, even, I don't want to say it too loud because the kitties will come in but if I say treat, you know, because they did something good, they'll, they'll all like, oh yes, we want to do that behavior again because we're going to get our treat. Well, we're not that much more advanced. It's anchor trigger again. And our brain chemistry just wires us into, if you say, oh, good job, Ashley, you know, then I want to do, my brain actually wants to do that same behavior over again because it's gotten praise. It doesn't matter if it's praise from somebody else or praise from you. It's just something that the brain creates. It's a natural thing. But we can use that we can rewire our brains using that so if every time we do one of these little tiny successful things if i just get on the pilates machine if uh, bj fogg just does his one or two push-ups even if they're wall push-ups you know if i just do one sun salutation we go yes you know that creates that dopamine that surge that rush and our brain wants to do that behavior again because it's positive right it's so much better than, oh, you're a failure, right? When you talk about it, you're a failure, you start slumping down and, and, oh, you didn't do that again. You know, we talk so negatively in our own minds. So this positive thing is such a rush for our minds. And so a note on celebration is really to, um, you have to kind of find the thing that's gonna work for you first of all. And then the thing to um, also imagine here is that you want to, kind of, you want to kind of almost rehearse this because it's not always easy to celebrate. Sometimes it feels like, well, I should be doing more or something. So you really need to find the way to celebrate for yourself. And then if it's hard to remember to do it, you might want to rehearse it. So he recommends doing this seven to 10 times per, uh, you know, seven to 10 times to rehearse it. And then it'll kind of be muscle memory, if you will, just like a yoga pose or something. So for instance, if I was going to use the, the yoga sun salutation uh, thing as, as a, an example, then I might go into my bathroom and wash my hands, come out here, and I've strategically placed my yoga mat in the center of my living room floor, when no one's here, of course, um, and then I do my, my sun salutation. And then I go, yes, or yay, or whatever. Uh, do my celebration, whatever it is, or my happy dance. You know, then I go back in the bathroom and I wash my hands, I do it again, come out here, same thing, yes, yay, or whatever. So seven to 10 times. So that gets that muscle memory going of this is what I want to do, this is when this happens, this is what happens. When this happens, this is what happens. Prompt, trigger, prompt, trigger, right? And it's also the celebration. So once we get that into a habit kind of uh, formation, 
then it's it's easier and automatic and our mind is celebrating this kind of thing and it becomes easier and easier and so if it is difficult for you to kind of remember this that's the way to do it and if you're wondering about how to celebrate because this feels kind of phony or fake or corny to you then I'm going to use a couple of examples from his book so you can find your natural way because of course you don't have to say yes I like to go yes because uh, it's hard to see here but yes like putting your arms up in that victory runner stance like you just ran the marathon is an Amy Cuddy technique um, that she found that changing your physiology into doing something like that or the Wonder Woman stance kind of changes your hormones and your neurotransmitters which changes your state um, and it can be done mentally as well. But of course, if that doesn't work for you, if that feels fake, then you might do a high five or a fist bump in your mind or, or to yourself, or you might hum or uh, even sing. I'm not a singer, but sing the, the theme song to Rocky if that's inspirational to you. Or you might do a, a happy dance like Ellen does, you know. Whatever it is, you might snap your fingers, that old NLP trick. So this is a, a couple little examples that I'm just going to go through from his book that can get you into uh, feeling what your own personal celebration might feel like. All right. So the first one is just imagine that you decided to apply for your dream job with a company that you absolutely adore. So you're going to make it through the process all the way to that final interview and then that hiring manager or supervisor, whatever it is, says we're going to send you an email with our decision. And the next morning that email comes, you open it up and the first word you read is congratulations. So what do you do in that moment? Just think about it. All right, so that's one example, whatever that was, that might be useful to you. The next one is you can imagine or picture yourself, uh, envision in any way yourself sitting in an office or your work environment and you have a piece of paper to kind of recycle. It could even be home, it doesn't matter, but your recycling bin is way across yonder. And I don't know, you're feeling a little playful, so you ball that piece up. You're like, geez, that's pretty far. You know, I'm not a sports person, but you ball it up and you, and it goes all the way in. You make like that, it's not a hole in one, <laughs> the, the two points, whatever it is in basketball. You make your hoop, basically, you get it in. What do you do? You say, yes, do you say, oh, do you go, yeah, whatever it is, okay? So just take that in. And now one more. So your favorite sports team, if you're into sports, okay, is in the championship game. And the score is tied, very little time remains. And as the time on the clock runs out, your team scores and they win the championship. Absolutely win it, take it away. Be Stanley Cup, World Series, whatever it is for you, okay? What happens next? What do you do? So take those feelings and move them over into your own life. And when you do that one or two push-ups or uh, sit-ups or that yoga sun salutation or you just get on the Pilates machine, whatever it is for you, you take one sip of water, no matter what it is, celebrate that because that is what anchors it in. That's what really gets that dopamine flowing and it rewires the brain. It's gonna make your changes, your habits, your goals so much faster, so much easier. So thanks so much. This has been a great Mindful Monday. I hope you make it a great one too.